Hey, Lauren. Yeah. Hey, it's Jimmy Moore. Hi, Jimmy. How are you doing? I'm good. Going to plug in my headphones. All right. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, there you are. Okay. <laughs> oh, the joys of modern technology. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I... Hey, Leo, man, didn't have to deal with all this. <laughs> uh, I'm I, you know, doing these webinars and blogs and interviews, and it's just it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paleo man would be going, what are you doing, Professor Cordain? <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself at uh, the UCLA conference? Oh, my gosh. That was that was incredible. Um, yeah, it was pretty amazing that, you know, almost everybody who was anybody, except for Art Devaney, was there. Yeah. yeah it was, and I don't know why Art didn't come. Somebody said that uh, he just wasn't up for it. I don't know. Oh, he'd have been a rock star there. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Easily. Yeah, because whenever I interview people on this show, Lauren, uh, they mention one of three names. They say your name, they say Rob Wolf's name, or they say Art Devady's name were the ones that introduced them to Paleo. Um, almost invariably, one of you three, and sometimes Mark Sisson, but, um, but mostly it's you three guys. Yeah, it's just, it's been a real uh, wild ride, Jimmy. I sometimes pinch myself because... Back in the early days, you know, when this first started, it was yeah. just a handful of us, Boyd Eaton, myself, right. Stefan Lindeberg, and, you know, the the Internet was really young and brand new, and so we corresponded, you know, a handful of people, scientists, anthropologists, and nutritionists, mm -hmm. and the, the world at large simply didn't know about this, and so it's just been a, amazing how this thing has just skyrocketed in the last three or four years. Yeah, and it's definitely kind of given you a rebirth here. Uh, people didn't even know who you were, possibly, are now like, oh, I know this guy now. <laughs> so that, that's Funny really you should cool. say that. I have uh, a roommate uh, that I went to optometry school with. You know, this was like 35 or 40 years ago. Yeah. And his son owns a couple of gyms in the Midwest, like in Des Moines. And so this guy Clark told us his son was talking to him about paleo and me, and Clark says, oh, yeah, I roomed with him. And his, his son just about went through the ceiling because he couldn't believe that his dad knew somebody that famous. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it is. So, I, you know, I find it all over. It's just it's absolutely amazing. I, you know, lecturing all over the country. I was in Boston a couple of weeks ago. Right. And I walk in, and, you know, People know who I am before I ever get there, you know. So it's uh, it's been a real fun ride, and uh, hopefully it'll just continue. Well, and it will definitely continue once people see C.J. Hunt's film. I, I I was able to, he sent me a copy of it before anybody else got to see it. Um, uh, you're one of the lucky ones. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, you are highly, uh, you're, you're probably got the most face time besides C.J. in the film. Um, wow, that's and, great. The whole football field analogy thing was just, I, I mean, that just hammered home how... Well, that was my idea. You know, yeah. I had, I, I have that, a similar analogy I use with uh, a roll-up paper, you know, that rolls out 200 feet, and I did that when I was interviewed on Dateline about a decade ago. Yep. And so I told CJ, I said, I think a better way of doing this, instead of rolling up a piece of paper, would do a football field. Yep. And so we did the calculations, and... Uh, I you know, haven't seen it because you know he just his film guy was there and never saw what it looked like. But I assume that that would be Stunning. really graphic way of showing, uh, you know, the recentness of modern foods. I'll never forget you had your finger on like the one millimeter line, and and, <laughs> and you were like, "This is the last ten thousand years," and I I was just. It just blew me away because then they panned out to the other ninety nine point nine nine yards. And it was like, oh my gosh, most of the time we were eating paleo and it's only been this one little speck in history that, uh, that we've not been. Yeah, you know, I think that, uh, that graphic is just going to blow people away. And so I, I'm glad that it worked out well. And uh, CJ, you know, I, I got to give him credit because he, he, he's an amazing guy. The, the adversity that he had to face to get mm -hmm. that thing going and finally go after it. I mean, he just doggedly pursued this, and, and now he's got himself a finished product, and I, I can imagine it's, it probably plays out wonderfully when you see it. Well, 
I'm going to do my part to help push it. I, I've already kind of promoted that I saw the film and that people can start pre-ordering it now. It it really was well done, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the you know the content that you contributed to it. Like I said, you you probably other than CJ got the most FaceTime in the film itself. Probably 20 minutes of the 90 minutes was was you. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I uh, one of the things too. I was I was very much pro uh, getting this film out, and so I did everything that I possibly could to introduce CJ to the players. You know, like Mike Richards and and all the you know the famous anthropologists and a lot of the nutritionists. It's like, oh yeah, I'm making a film, but I gave him that introduction, and so uh, I, I think that uh, once they got on board with it, I think it, it was a snowballing effect. Yep. And I think that's also what happened, you know, at uh, the Ancestral Health Symposium is uh, the guys, Brent and uh, the other guy. Aaron? Yeah. So I, you know, they approached me first with this because I think they needed to have me in the centerpiece. Yeah. And so I gave them that Woodstock quote and I said, yeah, I'm on board. And uh, and I think it's kind of like everybody who's anybody says, well, if Lauren's going to be there, I guess we better attend. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't have a lot of money. If they would have had money to promote it, they could have gotten anybody. But they didn't have money, and everybody ended up paying mainly their own way, except for a few people. And so I think it was that's how that thing got to be so big. Yeah, and I've, I've done something similar with the low carb crews. I don't pay the speakers that come on that, but they come uh, as a service to the community and and as kind of a thank you for the work that I do. Um, you know, they they volunteered to come on their own dime. So that it it. I mean, if you can get a community together of people who aren't in a vested monetary interest in, in promoting this message, you know, I think you've got something pretty special there. Yeah, well, you, you've been central to this whole thing, you know. You've been involved in the, the low-carb. You know, of course, I, I've known the Eads forever, you know. Yeah. We, we date back to before any of their books, before Protein Power, any of that stuff hit. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that uh, low-carb guys... The, the evolutionary template supports the low carb, and so it's a, a pretty good fit. And know? we're certainly on the same team. It, it disheartens me, Lauren, whenever I see, oh, well, paleo is not really low carb. I'm like, well, it doesn't really have to be, uh, but it certainly can be for some people. Yeah, well, I, I think it's uh, very difficult to eat paleo and eat high carb. I don't think most people can do it because if you get your carbs from fruits and veggies primarily – then you're probably not going to have more than 25% or 30% of your calories as carbs. If you do, you know, paleo has is, is, is become its own. It's a Medusa head now. It's, everybody's got their own ideas of what paleo is. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, there's a variety of ways of applying it, and you can probably get into at least medium carb, but you can't get into high glycemic load carbs on paleo because... Right of the restriction for grains and, you know, refined sugars and so forth. But people that eat, uh, you know, they're endurance athletes that get around it a little bit by eating tubers and, and roots and, you know, sweet potatoes and yams and, and that kind of thing, and, you know, by doing uh, uh, smoothies and, and so forth. So it, you can kind of get around it, but it's very difficult to get into the upper echelons of high glycemic load carbs, which are the norm in the Western diet. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that some people buy into things like safe starches and thinks, oh, everybody can have those things, and yet not everybody. Only those really elite athletes really should be consuming those on a regular basis. You know, and that's really the point that I made, uh, you know, in my second book, The Paleo Diet for Athletes. Uh, Joe Friel is my co-author. And, and by the way, Jimmy, we've uh, actually revised that book, and the revision will be out um, in fall of this year so that you know for your listeners uh, they'll be interested to know that so it's uh, really made some some changes in it but you're right um, the average person um, in the western world is overweight obese two-thirds of all uh, adults in the u.s are overweight or obese and 70 percent or more have one one or more symptom of the metabolic syndrome so you know high refined uh, high glycemic load carbs are, are really shouldn't be part of their their normal diet. You know, eat them on Christmas or you know on a birthday or something. But 
they really can't be staples uh, simply because what they do hormonally. Now, if you're an elite endurance athlete and you're putting in 100 miles a week, uh, you can do just about anything, but it's still not healthy. So th they still change hormones. For instance, we know that the hormones that are involved in, ac in acne, whether you're an endurance athlete or not, uh, you'll still have acne if you eat that kind of food. So, you know, there's some downsides to it, and, and we really believe that uh, we need to get back to the basics and, and start eating uh, our carbs as fresh fruits and veggies. When we do that, most people are in pretty good shape. Hear, hear. I agree with that. <laughs> so you know about my new book. I've got a new book out called The Paleo Answer. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we haven't officially started the interview yet, but you've been so fascinating to talk. Um, I, I, I want to dive into that You're free to include now. any of that in the interview if you want. I'm actually going to make a YouTube video out of that because it was really fascinating stuff. So um, I'll use that uh, kind of as a, a teaser promo for this podcast, and then we'll uh, get it All out right. there. Because people always love hearing from you. Like I said, you, Rob, and uh, Art Devaney are the three. Whenever I ask you know, who inspires you to go paleo, one of you three, almost invariably, uh, your name comes up. Yeah, it's, it's just really cool, you know, because you guys are doing great work, and I don't think you sometimes realize just how far-reaching your message has been. So You know, I, I don't, and, and I, that, that's one of the things that's, you know, you, you never really completely understand it. I, I kind of get it, you know, when I go out of town, I travel to the East Coast, I travel to the West Coast, I travel to Europe, and everybody knows who I am. They're familiar with my work. They've got my books. My books have been translated in, I don't know, 20 languages or something. But, you know, I, I still get up in the morning and put <laughs> my pants on one leg at a time. That's right. And when I drive to work, you know, many people know my name, but they don't know my face. So it's, I'm still somewhat anonymous. And uh, here in Fort Collins, we have, uh, I think, five or six CrossFit gyms. And I know if I were to walk into any one of them, it would be like everything would stop. <laughs> yeah, so, they had to play some rock music. <laughs> so, and they may not recognize my face, but as soon as they knew who it was, yeah. everything was... So it, it, started to, it started to hit me a little bit, but uh, I'm still so uh, flattered by, you know, this worldwide attention of, of this concept. And to me, I, I think the reason for it is that it works. And if people can behaviorally decide that they want to do this, and eat these types of foods for the rest of their life, everything gets better. Their blood chemistry, if they're overweight, they lose weight. If they're athletes, increase muscle mass, uh, you know, better mental clarity, blah, blah. The list is endless. And, and so it's, it's really been gratifying to see this. And with the, the national and worldwide, you know, recognition of this concept, we're now starting to see people with all kinds of health conditions that I hadn't originally considered uh, that go into remission or have dramatic improvement. And, you know, Rob's website is huge. Yeah. My website is huge. And so we have people talking to us constantly and emailing us. And it's absolutely amazing the number of health problems that go into remission. So you know, we talk about, you know, the, the enormous amount of money our government is spending on health care costs and, you know, all these programs, the government programs to try to alleviate this and blah, 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 blah. Well, if everybody went paleo, we wouldn't have to worry about that. It would certainly make things a whole lot better. It sure would. Yeah. Well, let's get started because if we keep chit-chatting like this, we'll never get the interview going. All right. Well, let's, let's get going here. All right. So here we go.